Good morning. Bo, please read the problem, and Billy, please translate. Flippin' physics. In a universe devoid of anything else, two identical spheres of mass, lowercase m and radius uppercase r, are released from rest when they have a distance between their centers of mass of uppercase x. Find the magnitude of the impulse delivered to each sphere until just before they make contact. Okay, um, there are two identical spheres which start from rest, so velocity initial of both spheres equals zero. Mass one equals mass two equals lowercase m. And the radius of each sphere, radius one equals radius two equals capital R. Um, the initial centers of mass distance is capital X. Uh, given that these two spheres are the only objects in the universe, they will be pulled toward, towards one another by the force of gravity. Uh, this will not be uniformly accelerated motion because the force of gravity pulling on each sphere will increase as the distance between the two spheres decreases, which means the acceleration will actually increase as the spheres get closer to one another. The final position is right before the two spheres run into one another. Impulse, or capital J, equals question mark, uh, because we are solving for the magnitude of the impulse delivered to each sphere during this event. Bobby, what are the equations for impulse, and which one do you think we should use in this problem? Impulse equals change in momentum, and it equals the area under a force as a function of time curve. Uh, we do not know the force as a function of time, so let's look at change in momentum instead. Uh, that equals momentum final minus momentum initial, or mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. Velocity initial equals zero, so the impulse delivered to each sphere equals mass times velocity final. Uh, we know the mass, it's just m, so all we need is the final velocity of each sphere, which should be the same because the two spheres are identical. Very nice, Bobby. Okay, so there is no energy added to or removed from the system via a work done by a force applied, and no energy converted to heat or sound via friction. Therefore, we can use conservation of mechanical energy. Billy, please identify which types of mechanical energy exist initially and finally in this situation, and please substitute in their equations. Okay, the initial and final points are already identified, and the zero line is at infinity because the gravitational field is not constant, so we need to use universal gravitational potential energy. There are no springs, so no elastic potential energy, initial or final. Initially, both spheres are at rest, so no initial kinetic energy. At the initial and final points, both spheres have universal gravitational potential energy, and at the final point, both spheres have kinetic energy. Now we can substitute in for each universal gravitational potential energy, negative universal gravitational constant times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by their respective values for the distance between the centers of mass of the two spheres. And for each kinetic energy, we can substitute in one half times their respective masses and their respective velocities squared. Something is not right. Y yeah. Remember, while it takes only one mass to have kinetic energy, it takes two masses to have universal gravitational potential energy. That means we only need one initial expression and one final expression to, remember the, to represent the universal gravitational potential energies of the spheres. However, we need two final expressions for the kinetic energies of the two spheres. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. That confused me as well. Bo, please substitute in values and solve for the velocity final of each sphere. Sure. Mass 1 and mass 2 are both lowercase m. The initial center of mass distance between the two spheres is capital X. And the final center of mass distance between the two spheres is, well, it's right before they touch, so it will be 2 times the radius of each sphere, so 2 times capital R. And... Everybody brought masks to the party! Everybody brought masks! Bo, please keep going. Okay, um, add big G times mass divided by 2R to both sides of the equation. Uh, then we can factor out big G times mass. And in the parentheses, we are left with the inverse of 2R minus the inverse of X. 
We could take the square root to solve for the final velocity of each sphere, which equals the square root of big G times mass times the quantity, the inverse of 2R minus the inverse of X. Uh, and we might as well go all the way back to what we are actually solving for in this problem, the magnitude of the impulse delivered to each sphere. All we need to do is substitute in the final velocity. Uh, once, we, once we have done that, you can see we need to bring mass under the square root. When we do, uh, it becomes mass squared, which multiplied by mass means is mass cubed. And we have the impulse delivered to each sphere. It's pretty ugly, though. It's just a bunch of variables. Well, believe it or not, a lot of times in physics we end up solving problems without numbers. I'm, I'm happy with this answer. If, if you want to make up some numbers and substitute them in, feel free to. But for me, it is time to say thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.